Okay, we're back in business. So it's the men's big air twin tip final heat. Number one here, Zach Adams, Finn Flugel, Edgar Ulrich, and Lorenzo Cassati. And uh, I'm also joined by not one, but two of our top female big air athletes in the world, Zara and Pippa. Hello, thank you for joining me. Hello, pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's sick. Um, it's going to be a sick final. I think it's the most windy, to be honest, that we have had in the event. I'm really looking forward to what the guys can pull off. I think they're mostly on nines or tens. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know what they are on. I think Lorenzo is on a nine meter peak. It's a new kite that's not out yet from Harlem. It's a bit like a Rebel five strut. Edgar is on the nine meter Rebel D lap. Finn also nine meter Rebel D lap and Zach. Don't know the name of the kite. Yeah, the slingshot uh, code, I think code, it is. Code NXT. Yeah, it's a nine meter also. So we just talked to Pippa. Just talked to the the guys tuning in. What what's the conditions like out there? You've obviously been out there doing a bit of caddying work and watched that final there. Yeah. Um, what can we expect? What are the conditions like? As we can see in the oh, the heat is actually the we are live right now and left on the bottom you see the wind speed is around 26 to 32 knots and Zach is going to go out first, skipping over the waves. Going to find a nice takeoff and um, yeah, it's really, he needs to make sure that's a good one because it's a final so you need to push out the best tricks you can. And, and talk and about a good one. Oh, adding the little grab on the end will show control so the judges like that for sure. Perfect. So anyone that's tuning in as well, we'll be taking you through this live final. Fire some questions your way. We've got Zara and Pippa here joining for the whole final. And uh, who's your money going to be on? Are we going to see Edgar go through? We had a big, big heat total score with Edgar in his semi-final. But like that, Zach, Finn and Lorenzo also pushing. Zara, what do you make of that first move with Zach there? Showing good control with the Tic Tacs as well. Yeah, that's going to score well. Got Finn Flugel now. Yeah, so scores now in. We've got an 8.80 for Zach on that first kite loop front roll tic tac. Here is Finn going. And just oh. remind yourself, guys, Finn is like super young, just sponsored by uh, Red Bull, which is really sick. Congrats on that, Finn. A nice opening trick, I would say. I think what my tactic would be um, to have the first two tricks like really steady and and solid so you have a, um, like a good opening and then you can take more risk it's actually Finn's first GKA big air event and his first big air final which is pretty sick well I didn't even know that yeah no he's <laughs> over there on the freestyle obviously and has pretty much up in the top five for freestyle as we Edgar, have here going Edgar. for the back roll kite loop laid back board off with two added rotations really sick I really think like Edgar style is for me it's amazing to watch and uh, yeah all the guys in the final they deserve it so much the level is going to be really close I think yeah so powerful look how he turns his head around to make sure to get into that good rotation and going for those two added ones spotting the landing and very clean so that's the first trick attempt done there for Edgar score still dropping for Finn and for Edgar and then we've got Lorenzo Cassati, who's been very, very busy today, up in semi-finals and finals, obviously for the surfboard as well, finishing second there. And he's now out in the twin tip men's final. So he'll be jumping last in sequence. We're going to have eight trick attempts, three of which are going to be counting here for this final in Jerry Coacoara, Brazil. Yeah, Lorenzo's a real waterman, opening up. Sick kite angle. Yeah, really sick. Oh. He is going to the inside though, so it's a little bit harder to get the same height as the other guys. Unfortunately, it crashed for him, but we have eight attempts and the three best are counting, so there's plenty of time to make up for that. I think they are honestly all looking for that top spot. Um, Lorenzo, yeah, as you say, is a real waterman. He um, is competing the whole day already. Probably a bit cooked, but um, <laughs> he can put, put it off for sure. So two scores now also dropping Finn there, 8.3. Edgar, 8.23. It's also Zach's first final. He's just super happy to be in it. I said, are you nervous? He's like, no, I just want to enjoy it. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's nice. Back roll, taking all the boards. Tic-tac. We're seeing a lot of tic-tacs in these lighter wins as well, yeah. especially. But nice little grab. It's important to know if you take the board off by the handle and then do a tic-tac, you will get scored higher um, because by the handle, it's just a bit easier than over the fin. So Finn now, second trick attempt for him. What's he got? Front roll. Doobie board off. Oh, tough landing on the wave. 
Still smiling though. So that'll be a crash for Finn. Yeah, it's hard to land with a chop. I was going to say, what about the takeoff? You know, obviously going right foot forward, you do have that advantage, let's say, of really using their kickers to the to the max. Yeah, for sure. If you if you find the right kicker, it's gonna uh, you're gonna have a very vertical takeoff, but it's hard to land because there's not much space between the kickers. And the other thing as well, what I felt it was a lot of current. Um, it looks like there's a lot of current today as well, um, because. To the right, you can have a lot of forward speed, and to the left, maybe more vertical takeoff. But it really depends on how the current, which way it goes. But it's high tide right now, so I, I suppose it's the same as yesterday. So Edgar now second trick attempt for him, 8.23 opening up with. I mean, look at those first scores from all those first three riders: Zach, Finn, and Edgar, all scoring up in the eights on that first trick attempt they had. Lorenzo just crashing his first trick, but Edgar now second trick attempt. Oh, good takeoff. Jesus, what a rotations. Oh, and lands it. That is sick. He's for sure happy with that one. It's crazy because it didn't seem that windy, but the power he puts in the rotations, he just speeds it up because he knows if you go a bit lower, you need to rotate faster. Really extending his leg, taking the board on at the last minute, which is uh, showing a lot of control as well. Yeah, he's got such a unique style, Edgar. Yeah. You can see there when the pink flag goes up with the riders like with color, it just means our judges are validating those scores. Just taking a little bit longer to review the trick. They're looking at kite angle, speed in, speed out, height, extremity, and clean landings. <laughs> it's like you know it off the back of your heart. Do we have any questions from the from the people watching at home? Everyone, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate the support, so keep the Oh, keep the comments coming and the hype as well. Yeah, so far no questions. Just Pippa goes full commentator mode right off the bat, <laughs> <laughs> straight away from uh, Rolly. Zach attack got a lot of Zach Adams fans as well. Okay, Lorenzo's up next. Hopefully he can get a score in right now. Going on the inside again. Whoa, oh, the, the kite, kite angle. angle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Not shit. Not quite getting the height, though. Yeah, but it's super tough to go on the inside, I think. Going for back roll. Here you can see the lines are like straight with him, so that's why the kite is so low. And here, just not enough height to get into oh, the other rotation, taking the board on. Otherwise, they would have. It was not the highest, but the kite angle was so leveled, so it would have scored high. So that's going to be tricky for Lorenzo. I think it's always for an athlete to start off with two crashes is a bit tough, but n usually we get seven attempts, and now we get eight for the semis and the final. So it will give you a bit more room to to crash, but still, it's um. Yeah, it's it's a challenging position. Zach going for the shark attack. Put in the contra loop. Oh, oh, going with the back. But it's really good that he like bend it like that and not trying to land very forced on the board because like that, I think if he would not turn his back, he would crash fully on um, on the board with his knees. Yeah, so he's got a kite loop back roll tic tac of 7.87 and a kite loop front roll tic tac which was that 8.80. That's exactly how he opened up his semi-final as well, Zach. And then Finn obviously crashing his second, but opened up nicely with a contra loop back roll tic-tac. Was it a shark attack, actually? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, you as you right. can see, the wind gets a bit more stable. Before it was 26, 32, and now it's getting... Oh, never mind. It is unstable. <laughs> yeah, it is really gusty. The other riders were also complaining about it before. Finn going... Oi! No and way! That's a freestyle turning background. into rep, turning into rep, which is really technical. He's a freestyler too. Finn is an amazing athlete, competing in all the disciplines almost. Yep. And here you can see why is it repped? Because he turns his like front leg into the back and then sticking it to the front again. And look at that. So sick. So creative there for Finn. Not going to be one of the bigger scores though. Obviously it judges really wanted of, that power. It shows a lot of technical, but we know that the judges, they put height first. Edgar going for the dangle. Oh, KGB. Was it? Yeah. No Top, way. Yes. 
Edgar well, Ulrich. I missed, I missed the takeoff a bit, so I have to see. Well, we're going to see the replay here. That was insane. So here take you can off. see taking off with a back roll, kite looping, going for the backside handle pass <laughs> with another rotation. So it's a, a KGB kite loop with another rotation. That's insane. I think this has never been done in a comp before. There we go. Watching once again, Edgar Here's passes going the bar. Backside and falling into that rotation, adapting super quick. Claims it straight away. That is cool. I think it's really good that he does this because it's now a bit lighter wind. Um, so for sure, this is a good trick to, to have in the bag as well. Yeah, it's looking good as well. It's going to be up in the nines. I think so too. A 9.3, I One guess. One more replay here in super slow-mo. It's good amount of height. And claims it, and rightly so, because it's looking big. So Lorenzo Cassati, as you already mentioned there, Pippa, as well, hasn't actually landed a trick so far, so he's definitely going to want to try and, you know, get into rhythm here. Yeah, and he is for sure, he has the top spot in mind. I know him. Look at the kite angle again. He stakes it, for sure he's happy with that. First score on the board. Yeah. So it's day number four here for the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup. We're in the final of the men's division. We finished our surfboard men's final just a few moments ago. And we're now on trick attempt number four in this men's twin tip division. Currently, Edgar Ulrich has put three absolute cream crackers down. One cream of those crackers. being a 9.50 <laughs> for that kite loop KGB. The first time we've seen that in this competition. And as you said, Pippa might be also in competition. Yeah, so Edgar's leading, then Zach, Finn third, and Lorenzo has to put two more scores on the board. Zach is on a roll here. We're gonna land this one. Yeah. Oh, shit, no. I can see Jeremy Rolando tuning in into the live stream. Bro, I hope you're okay. Um, we wish you a speedy recovery, and we hope for sure to see you in the, in the final soon, man. Yeah, Zach there, just crashing out. We have a little black screen in the live stream. <laughs> Some squeaky bum situations <laughs> going on. It is, it's, yeah, squeaky bum time. But it's all good because we're going to replace that with another Finn one. Finn has a solid start as well. He had the last score only 6.5. So he wants to upper that score for sure. Going for the front row. Doobie, board off with added rotation. And sticking it so, like, and he makes it look too easy. Oh, on the end a bit weird, though. The first rotation, he goes not that inverted. And I know that the judges, they score inversion also a bit higher than vertical. So um, inversion is also really important to get a higher score. But as you can see, they are pretty close to each other, but Edgar is leading by far now yeah but he has he's the first one to have three tricks I mean, on the board. It's pretty much the perfect heat as well he hasn't got a score which is underneath an eight no that's crazy and for the first three trick attempts as well to be able to have those dialed down and i don't know if someone has watched it but edgar just made a document like a short documentary about his path also in love island and how he felt about it and his way back to competition because it was challenging for him and the way he talks about it was so pure and real so make sure to watch that one so Edgar now, fourth trick attempt. Finding the kicker, finds Going it. again. But now, oi! Oh, that was a tough crash. Absolute leg breaker there. But it is front roll, Kai loop, and then wants to go for the mope. So it's, um, I hear a KGB, but it's not KGB. Nope. <laughs> No, well, it's actually funny that we actually spoke, I spoke to Edgar just before and he was mentioning that those were the two that he was going to go, the, the Kite Loop KGB and also the MOB, as you mentioned. So yeah. he's going to be looking for that as well. I mean, he'll be told that the Kite Loop KGB there scoring that 9.50. So if he can go and obviously go for the MOB as well, be looking at a similar score. Yeah, I think the, the front blind MOBs are one of the sickest moves and if he can pull it off with a Kite Loop, it's insane. And it's the perfect conditions to do it here as well. They said you completely changed the mood of the competition. <laughs> <laughs> She's in. So Lorenzo okay, now. Lorenzo, let's go. You got this. 
I'm not sure what size he's riding. I was doubting him between a 10 or a 9. No, he's riding the 9. Okay. Oh, the kite angle is so sick with him. Back to laid back board off. It was not the high, like the highest trick though, but he's really going for a kite angle. I think it's hard to get the height to the left. You see the difference in height when the riders are going to the left or to the right. You can see the sto stoke of Zach just being there. I don't know, what is his age? He's 16 or something? Yeah, no, I think he's a bit 17? older. Oh, 18 already? I think so. Uh. But here he is, trick attempt number five. So this is now the halfway point in this heat. And as it stands, it is Edgar out in front. Big height oh, here from that's Zach. Sick. For him, these board spins are too easy. He does it on every single trick. So that's huge it's, there it's, from it's Zach. It's huge from him, and I'm super happy that he can pull it off. I thought, like, when I asked him, are you nervous? And he's like, no, no, I'm chilled. I'm just enjoying it. I'm like, hmm, maybe he just says that, and he's actually really nervous. But I can really see that he's uh, pretty chilled going into this final. That's, that's insane to watch. Yeah, that's going to be a big score. When I have my first final, I my pants <laughs> <laughs> so red flag up Finn Flugel now big score coming in for Zach Finn now lowest the score well, is a 6.50 let's go Finny going for the boogie but board of by the Finn oh I cannot get it yeah and Zach Adams is quite loop back roll tic tac score to drop there as well yeah that's going in but he does already have that same move. So he needs to tick another family, Zach. Yeah, so it's very important if you have three tricks that you always upper the lowest score of the board. Otherwise, you need to improve a higher score, which is obviously harder. Um, and then we have different families. Like you can do, um, for example, to explain it easy, like a boogie loop is with a front row and a kite loop, but you can also do the boogie with the contra loop. But let's watch Edgar leading this heat by far so it's gonna be super comfortable hopefully front roll oi doobie extra rotations getting the board on sticking it like claiming it already before he landed he is for on sure fire. on a very very good roll for this heat yeah he'll be looking to improve that kite loop front roll board off what did he do he just having some fun after <laughs> i didn't see it <laughs> so edgar yeah, it's looking good as well, this one here. He's really having a heat to remember at the moment. Yeah, I think um, Edgar has worked so hard as well on his consistency and uh, it's really uh, paying off, so really happy for him. Yeah, had his best result, I believe, at Lords of Tram at the start of this year where he had a podium finish. Don't believe he's yeah. won an event here. He's I think he's never won an no. event. So, but at the moment, he's in the driving seat. 9.07 there. Crazy. Has dropped, so he's got two scores up in the nines. And he still has three attempts uh, to have some fun out there. Lorenzo That's now. That's crazy. Oi, with a board flip and a grab, that will be a nice score for him. And I think also know that we're just on the half of the heat. Or no, we are on the fifth trick now. So we have three tricks left. So literally anything can still happen yep. because the only the best three count. There's no impression score. So yeah, Edgar is sitting comfortably in front, but... Uh, we also know that all the other riders can pull it off in uh, in any trick, basically. So, Zach now, sixth trick attempt. Only has two tricks counting towards his total score, just like Lorenzo. However, Lorenzo does have that previous one. Here you can see Lorenzo supported by his dad and his little brother, Leonardo. That's Who also, also really absolutely good. rips. Here you can see Finn's um, boogie tic-tac by the Finn. Oh, Zach, Zach Adams going for the tornado, I think. Yeah, putting the contra loop as well. I think he there was the back row rotation. But yeah, with a contra loop. It was hard to see from our life. Oh, it's the front. Front roll. Front roll. Board off with the contra. Shark attack. Shark attacky. He's going to tick that other family he was missing now. So that score was 16.67. Yep, you're going to see that bump up. Zach attack. So it was not a tornado, guys, because that's a back row rotation. It is a shark attack. It's the front rotation. With a contra loop. With a contra loop. <laughs> Finn, yeah, Finn. Uh, looping very late. Yep. No height either as well. Yeah. 
He just missed, I think he just missed the takeoff, but we still wanted to make something out of the trick. Yeah, his kite was oversteered, I think, a bit to the left side. Yeah, he's going to see no improvement now on his lower scores. But so, Edgar still leading. Yeah, his lowest score is 8.23, as we can see, so he wants to upper that score. I'm not sure on which trick that was again. Can we see that? On the kite loop, ah, the back roll kite loop board off. Yeah, late kite back. loop back roll ball off Edgar opened up, which was the 8.23. I don't know if he could do a tornado, then that will be uppering that score. Because he wants to stay in that category and uh, make that one better. Or open up a new category. So it's, uh, if it's at the fin or with a tic tac, it will be a new category. Exactement. I think though we are really lucky with the wind. Like yesterday was way too light to run it. So I'm, I'm super glad that the, that the final can still run. The guys are absolutely sending it in this heat. Yeah, it's definitely the strongest conditions we've had so far. Yeah, it's good. Waiting patiently for yeah. it. They're on, tr like Edgar's on trick attempt number six. Um, you can see right now, uh, Edgar's leading. Zach is in second place, followed very closely by Lorenzo. And then Finn is also still in the game. So they're very close towards each other. So Edgar now. Here we go. Back roll. Board off. Tight loop laid back, board off. So he was trying to upper that score, like the 8.23, but obviously this is a yeah. crash. That's what we're going to see Edgar do now. Unless, like you said, he wants to try and tick a new family. But I think he'll go and try that one again, get that 8.23 up in the nines. And then he really will be the one to chase. Yeah. Lorenzo Cassati. His and lowest score, kite loop back roll, board off. Of a 6.67. We know Lorenzo can score the biggies as well. Yeah, Lorenzo had a really long day. Um, hopefully he's still fresh. <laughs> I think so. He has um, three scores already, so now he can uh, take more risk. And for sure he will do that because he's eager to win this event. Yeah, he's currently in third position as well. This event will count towards the 2025 calendar year as well. So good kite angle oh, there for Lorenzo. Crazy can't get the board on and not enough height unfortunately i'm wondering why he is not um taking himself to the to do something to the right maybe he's not too comfortable with that yet because that seems a little bit disappointment but he can still do it so two trick attempts remaining now zach's going to be the next rider to jump his lowest score that consolute front roll board off that he did previously and also funny to know that Finn is on a kite that he literally just tested right before uh, the final. It's not his kite, he borrowed a 9 because he only had an 8 and a 10. But it seems to be working out quite well for him. So Zach now doing a trick to the left. Uh, not double back table. roll. I think that yeah, the wind is, can be like literally 5 minutes on, 5 minutes like way less. So I think we're in that uh, low right now. Sometimes there's a lot of current to the left, so it could also be that looks like it's right now this case. Yeah, it's funny you say that because those were, were the words Edgar exactly said the same. Five minutes it's on, five minutes it's off. Yeah. It's off. And obviously the current to the left, so. But you can see they're getting way more high to the right. Yeah, for sure. So Finn now going to the left. Finn. Again, Not though, lacking a bit of height. Oh! He was going one way and then <laughs> just switched last minute. I didn't really see what he was doing, but it so was here we go. back roll, oh. board flip. Board flip. Board, no, not a board spin. And uh, he pulls the front hand, which is... Uh, and then reverse, yeah. <laughs> Quite sick to control like that. Um, Finn is a super talented rider. I think he's going to do really well in the future. I think we can expect big things from him. For sure. Yeah, being able to c cover both disciplines as well on the freestyle and the big air. Also was in the Hydra Fall big air as well, so likes to keep himself busy, but I guess he has youth on his side. Yeah, but it's also, um, I think right now you can really tell the heavier riders, like Lorenzo is definitely way heavier than, than Finn and um, Zach I think is also not the heaviest, but Zach is really tall. So it's it, for them it's way easier to, to get the height. Yeah, in the light wind conditions, the lighter riders definitely have an advantage. I didn't feel that yesterday, though. <laughs> <laughs> what did you 
<laughs> I, I didn't feel that yesterday. <laughs> so Edgar now wants to get that kite loop back roll board off up from an 8.23. Let's go, Edgar. It's really good. You can see that Edgar is taking his time, not rushing anything, because like I was doing that a bit in my final, I rushed it, and then when you rush it, your takeoff is gonna be bad, and then you, yeah, you could better just not do a trick because you crash it anyway, or the score is gonna be lower. And they also have 50 seconds now instead of 40 seconds in previous heats. Yeah, I think that's good too. So, Edgar going for it, back roll, mm, Kailu blade back board off with added rotation. Yeah, it does manage to stick it. I think height-wise, maybe, yeah. Because you can really see that his speed on the landing was almost gone. It's still nice that he shows like control and consistency, but I am doubting if it's going to score higher. Yeah, Finn just had that last move, that constant back roll with the flip as well of the board. That's gone down as a 7.33. And Lorenzo going on the inside again. The kite angles every time. Super every good. single time. With the grab, really controlled. He's going to be for sure happy with that one. I'm curious to see what the score is going to be on Lorenzo because he gives a little bit away on the height, but yep. the kite angle makes up for it for sure. And as you can see, the score of Edgar dropped in. It's a 6.6, .6, so that's way lower than his first um, back row kite blade back. Yeah, so it's going to get interesting now because we're in the last round of tricks. So we do have that score, as you mentioned, Pippa, to drop for Lorenzo. Is it going to be enough? He's going to upper the 6.6, .6, I think. Because that was a kite loop back row board off and he went for the same category. Zach on the inside as well. Mm, he wanted to take off but didn't find it. So last round of tricks now, last chance for Zach. He needs a 3.77 additional to what he already has. And he can do that, eh? He can, he yeah. He but has a 6.37, so he needs a high nine yep. to, to take the win. He's going on the outside. Going for it's the big. It's big. Ah, but can't take the board off. Yeah, pulls the loop a little bit ah, late shit. as well. It seemed really like the height was perfect, to be honest, on this one. Yeah, right height, but yeah, as you mentioned, couldn't get the board off. Will be deducted there. I don't think it that's going to be, be enough. It will be tricky who's going to be on the podium because they're all super close towards each other. Yeah, Lorenzo's last score also came in, uh, which makes him second place now, yep. but super close with Zach. Yeah, Finn, I mean, he's only 0 0.97. Here he is, oh, Finn Flugel. If Finn lands this, yeah. Gets that nice bit of Boy. lift. That is sick. Unbelievable Crazy there from under Finn. under pressure on the last trick attempt because he was out-podiumed by Zach and Lorenzo. Pulls the front hand, so that is the contra loop again. The contra score a bit lower than the kite loops, I feel. Yeah, so Zach didn't upper his score. He only got a 4.8. We're going to wait for Finn's score because he wanted to make the 6.5, the contra loop back row better. Yep. Um, yeah, that's his lowest score at the moment. Of so the I think he's gonna. Uh, it's gonna be tight, eh? Yeah, you can see judges taking their time here. The pink flag is up. So the pink flag is up. So they're just validating all the scores at the moment. There'll be a bit more time. So I'm sure. He needed a. He needed to upper his score with like very little. So as we can see, Finn's dro score dropped. It's a seven point six. But it's not calculated yet into his scores. Um, yeah, but looking. I think they need to... Yeah, there you yeah, go, 7.63. Yeah. So that's so it now. He's in second it. place. That's so going to be exciting to watch. Edgar is going to go. He's still in first position. If he wants to keep that, it's going to be important to upper his score a little bit. But it's also going to be hard for Lorenzo to overtake Edgar. Yeah, he's still going to be working on maybe doing that 8.23, that kite loop back roll board off. That seems to be the move. But he's coming to the left. Oh, huge uh, guide loop handle pass. Oh, uh, but it was crazy big. If you watch here the replay, I believe that's after the His move. His freestyle background is definitely helping him in this in this final, which is super sick to see. So here we go, unhooks, gets a crazy amount of height. Pulls the guide loop with two hands, go for the handle pass, extra rotation. Unfortunately, so like that won't be scoring high because of the huge um, back check. 
So, so it comes down to this move then. This is it. So it's a crash for what Edgar. What does Lorenzo need He to needs an additional 3.72 on a score that he already has. But that's not possible because his highest, the lowest score is 7.4. 7.43 is his lowest score. So he's comboed out, I think. So Lorenzo can only go for the second place and he only needs a 0 0.18. So that means he would need a 7.5 or 7.6 something. I think you might be right there. Because he has two tricks of 7.43 exactly. So he can choose out of two um, two uh, categories. So here we go. Last trick attempt for Lorenzo. He might just he be fighting now he for seconds. Better height. Tic Tacs. Oi. I think, I think he will get it with this one. The second place. The not second the place. Yeah, he's not going to get first here. I think the... The crown is now on Edgar's head for the first place. We're going to see what Lorenzo will get. But we know for sure the podium is going to be Edgar, Finn and Lorenzo. And Edgar won the event, I think, 100% sure. The kite angle is good. Yeah, waiting for this score now to come in. Can't see anything our side at the moment as we watch the replay here from Lorenzo. So scores now starting to come in. Don't think it's going to be... It's going to be very, very tight between... Lorenzo I and Finn. Second. I think he's going to take second. But that means, well, we, we still have to wait for the score, but I think it means Edgar won, and I think Lorenzo will be second, and Finn third, and Zach fourth. So here we go. Kite loop front it? roll, tic tac. It's looking. There we go. 7.70. So he just bumped in front of Finn by point, 0 0.11 of a point. Taking he second place. High-fiving the, the caddies behind him. Which means and that Edgar look at Ulrich. Edgar with his dad. His dad is carrying on the back. So cool to see. Congrats to this legend. Look his smile. He is so happy. Look at his dad. Uh, his dad came from France. Yeah. That's sick. I got goosebumps for him. Congrats, Edgar. It's the first Edgar. event he wins, right? Yeah, it's the first one. And that will stay with him for sure. Mm. And it's also good for him. He's going to go to Kota with a nice, nice win, nice feeling. It's going to motivate him for sure. For sure. And it was really his conditions because he's right foot forward. Yeah. You can really see that. <laughs> uh. Showing his strength. <laughs> yeah. What is more exhausting? 30 minute sequence heat or 12 minute heat? That's that may, that's a logical thing, huh? Twelve mi uh, twelve minute heat is way less exhausting. <laughs> What's that for a question? I don't know. <laughs> well, we had to share the mic, but now we got both our own mic, so that's why we were a bit. Uh, uh, Look, Lorenzo is also happy. So Lorenzo actually two times second place, second place strapless, and sec second place twin tip. And Zach there just missed out on the podium, but he is pushing the level and he will be on that podium in the future for sure. Yeah, next up, Kota for it's all three. I oh, know Finn, no. It's really cool. Also, you can see like this is why the kite community is so special. Everyone is still hugging each other after, after the race. It's yeah. for sure fighting during the comp but after that it's um, everyone is cool with each other yeah this is what i love about our community like all sharing the same passion and that we can also be happy for each other in every possible way so much love in the live stream for edgar <laughs> super yeah. cool to see you know him pretty well right yeah i've like we're teammates and we've done some trips together um he's always like so happy and um always smiling always smiling look at his style is just yeah, so insane. crazy i don't know anybody with a style like him he has a video on his instagram i think it's pinned and i watched this like 40 yeah. times yeah it is that that trick for it's me is my favorite trick of all time he keeps on spinning and spinning and spinning yeah, he did super well. Definitely deserves it. Bringing freestyle background yeah. into into the conditions, what makes it suitable for it. Uh, I think so the judges really like that. If you look at the scores, they like to bring back the freestyle. I think because it's scoring both in a nine. Yeah. And the conditions were there for. 
Because if it's 40, 45 knots, it's, well, I never unhooked, but <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea. In I would never conditions. unhook in 40 knots. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to big air. Yeah, well-deserved winner. I think the podium is, uh, is super nice. Congrats to all the guys. And thanks everyone watching home. Um, it's Everybody been super cool to crazy. feel the support. Like yesterday as well, you get so many messages and um, we need to keep the love coming. Yeah. All French commentary here in the top chat. Oh, I, I see someone said Some like it's 12 minute heat. So 12 minutes back to back tricks or 30 minute sequence. I think 12 minutes is more intense. It's I just like, like uh, King of the Air style, um, but I prefer it because then you cannot go to the beach. You don't have time. It's just 12 minutes full on. And it's all everybody gets the same conditions because now it's for everybody gets an attempt. If it's gusty, you don't have the gust. If you don't have the wave, it's also a bit of luck when it's like this. Well, when you have a heat that's like 12 minutes, you just have to go for it. Yeah, I think that too. You can turn your brain off and go. Here we have the podium. So first, Edgar Ulrich, second, Lorenzo Cassati from Spain, uh, third, Finn Flugel from Germany, and fourth, Zach Adams from the United States. They're all looking they super so stoked. stoked. It's cool to see. It's sick that we got some wind for the final. Yeah, it really happened. Way better than expected when we looked at the forecast this morning. And also, these guys are like, pushing the level so much. Finn is super young. Zach is still young as well. And we've got two more experienced riders in this one, Edgar and Lorenzo, taking the top spots. It's but, impressive um, uh, with Finn. I don't think he's training that much bigger. No, it's in crazy. His first competition straight away on the podium. Yeah. But also he seemed super calm, just collecting the tricks. Yeah. But he probably has a lot of competition experience, just not in... Yeah, soon everybody will be off to K. Yeah, soon everybody will be off to Cape Town after this event for the King of the Air Big Air that will be 23rd of November until the 8th of December is the wind window. Yeah. So. Uh, hey, for how long do we need to, to chat in this live stream? We need to continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're going to finish now. <laughs> All right. So everyone, thanks for tuning in. Super glad that, um, that you guys tuned in and hopefully you enjoyed it. We're going to have the podium and the prize ceremony tonight, so make sure you check it on Instagram. We'll see some more highlights and uh, have a good day. So there we have it. Thank you. Well, a massive thanks actually to both Zara and Pippa for joining in the booth there. Really good to get the sort of riders insights into competition and, uh, you know, pick their brains. And it was amazing there to see Edgar take the victory here for the first event of the 2025 calendar. What a way to go here in Jericho Acquire. That is the end of the event. We've now crowned all our champions. Two in Hydra 4 for men and the women. One in the men's surfboard and obviously Mika and Edgar now for the twin tip division. Vex up, we are be going to go to Kawipe Lagoon in just a couple days time. We have got the second event of the year for the freestyle division. It's going to be epic in that flat lagoon, steady winds. Stay tuned, follow the socials. We can't wait to be back once again in Brazil in a couple days time.
flight. I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I'll keep it safe. Okay, bye. This is a dream come true.